Welcome to round two. Um, yes, I would like to play first. Uh, just a second. My friend asked if I was drafting, and in fact I am. Hmm. This hand, huh? Yeah, I don't think I can justify keeping this. I mean, if I draw into one other land here, I can play a Searchlight Geist. However, at this point I do have more Swamps in my deck than Planes. Which means that the chances that I will get to play a Seraph of Dawn turn 4 are very minimal. So let's go ahead and mull. Alright, this is much better since this time we get, you know, two sweepers. One that we probably would not be able to ever cast this game. But the other is very castable since we have already two swamps. And also we have uh, two guys that we can actually cast. So... Alright. Ooh, awesome. It's also worth, worth noting that uh, the Butcher Goal is actually a pretty good card with Baron Blood. A here I'm going to start with a Crypt, uh, crypt Creeper. I, get, I keep saying Crypt Keeper, but... <laughs> yeah. So actually, if he wants to trade for my guy there, he is welcome to do so, but I don't think he will somehow. Alright, that was good. Wait. Play Swamp. Attack him. Maybe he's not going to, to block here. Maybe he is. I mean, especially if he doesn't have a follow-up. Yep. No problem. Now I'm gonna play my Butcher Goal and then hope that he plays like two <laughs> two creatures next turn so that I can play butter in blood. Or maybe he doesn't have a third lane. Alright, he does. He may be color screwed though. Ooh, awesome. Another guy to another awesome, you know, butter in blood creature to have in the battlefield. Maybe he has the the wolf, right? Yeah, I don't think I'm attacking here. I think it's likely that he has the wolf. S instead, go ahead and play the undead executioner. <clears throat> well, he did not play his wolf now, so I think he doesn't have it. Alright, Borderland Ranger to finally get his other color of mana, and that's a mountain. I think he, sh he should actually have played this guy before going to search search for a mountain but that might mean he has a joint assault here to, to pump his guy all right you know what i don't really want to attack with any of my guys here at this point since that wouldn't do much for me <clears throat> okay Now I think attacking is actually good here with my executioner. <clears throat> All right, one mana away for being able to cast my redeemer and even terminus. But yes, at this point I'm just going to bash with my executioner and see what he does. All right. Go ahead and kill his Vigilante. Like, Vigilante is not the best card or anything, but... You know, it's still a 2 for run. See what he musters here. <clears throat> Lightning Mauler. Alright, perfect. So now I'm just going to bother him blood, I guess. He's gonna bash me with his swine, but not with his smaller, I, I don't think. So I take four and then get rid of his board and get a 2-2 for my troubles. And I think I'm even going to attack here since... 
I don't think he's going to block. Ooh, that's that's good too. I mean, I do hope he doesn't block here. Otherwise, things would get kind of awkward, and my battling blood would go from being awesome to being mediocre. <clears throat> Alright, so we've got two turns in a row of getting two for ones. I imagine that is <laughs> something nice to have. But he still has four cards in hand. What's happening here? All oh, right, I guess he had some a little bit of card advantage with his borderline ranger here. All right, fervent Cathar, no problem. Now I really need to draw into the sixth land to play my redeemer, especially since I do want to. Mm, do I do I right choose blow it? I don't suppose I do, especially since it, like when I draw my sixth land here, I'll be able to gain two extra life so that ooh dark imposter that's that's interesting let's go ahead and play it and hope he doesn't have a way to kill it because now once we we get to six mana we are actually gonna be destroying him Now I do block when he attacks. And I even may right to blow his other guy. Seems fine. <coughs> so hope he doesn't have a way to deal with our imposter. I don't think he does because if he did, he would have snapped uh, snap casted. Ooh, alright. Uh, this is actually kind of good against me I mean not against me but against this board position it's it's actually nice still think I'm going to righteous blow his his guy there Ooh, all right mad prophet Ooh, and this guy we got mad prophets ability that that seems seems awesome actually hmm. see what he's doing there I mean, he could attack. It's not like I would block or anything, since I do want to exile this guy here. Uh, yes, I think I'll simply righteous blow his guy. <coughs> yeah, anyway, if he attacked, I think I would have to block here. No reason just to count on getting that extra land here. Alright, now I think we can actually attack with the Butcher Goal. Since playing as SRF of Dawn will actually be a big beating here. Lifelink is awesome. <clears throat> this guy does not have protection from zombies since he's not paired with anything at this point. Go ahead and play the Seraph. Alright. So now, when we actually get to 6 mana, we will have a lot of options. We will obviously not play Terminus since we have a, a much better board position at this point. Uh, Alright, so he drew 2 cards. Yeah, I think his deck has some questionable cards. <coughs> Obviously not blocking here. I think he should have actually bonded with a, a, a two power guy. Since that would hit me harder. And you know, giving pro zombies from his for his nightshade peddler doesn't really do much here at this point. Alright. That is excellent. Let's go ahead and attack with the Seraph. Gain to life, and I think before he draws his card, I will just remove his thing here. So 
since I do want the ability. I actually don't want to discard any of the cards that I currently have in my hand, but eventually I will draw into more lands and I don't really need lands at this point. Alright, I am taking. No way I'm blocking here. I don't really need to since I have a life linker. Ooh, that's alright. So go ahead and attack with the gull and the seraph. And I think at this point I do not want to exile anything he has, so I would simply play a a go night redeemer, I think. I mean he could have a bonfire of the ten and yeah, so I think I don't really have to <coughs> to play the, the Redeemer. I mean, if the board st stays as is, I am actually winning. Ooh, Jesus. He actually forced me to sac to discard my Terminus and my <laughs> Gold Knight Redeemer. That is pretty nasty. <laughs> but okay, I mean, drawing 7 should be fine yeah then I mean I didn't imagine he would have a card such as this one in his deck Let's see what he plays here <coughs> I'm at 15 it's not like I am in danger of actually getting to getting mauled to death this turn here Let's see what he does. Alright, Timberland Guide. No problem. Let's see where he will put this counter here. Alright. That was the guy that I was intending to exile the way, so no harm done here. <coughs> and at the end of, the, of turn I get to just discard a card and, and draw a card. Alright. No problem. So I guess if he attacks here. Uh, did he play a land this turn? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, and I'm, you know. <laughs> don't really want to look that up. So I think I would simply exile this thing here and block the other Qatar. Cathar, that is. Let's go ahead and block this guy. Oh, he may very well have it, right? Oh, he did. Man, that was bad. And I even forgot to... Yeah, that, that was a ridiculous turn. I even forgot to... Uh, to discard and draw a card. Hmm, do I have anything here I want to bring in? I mean, there's a creep, creep, creeper. <laughs> but all right, let's go ahead and try to not make those same same mistakes again. I think the best option here is to play a redeemer than play a searchlight thingy. <coughs> I mean, I'm so... The thing that bugs me here is that I actually thought he might just play a land and, and, and have the Pillar of Flame and still I blocked. I mean, why, right? I gave him a chance to get back in the game and this just should not have happened. <clears throat> I guess I could block something with my, my Searchlight Ghost here if I really wanted to, but... I don't think I do since I'm probably gonna be able to I mean first of all he's not going to attack since he he wants to leave his uh, death touch pro zombie guys back to make sure I do not have a uh, lethal attack next turn but either way I think he's in a bad position here He 
he could have that thing that gives plus six plus six to his creature and forces me to block it that would be kind of a blowout but still ooh, Jesus look at that I think I'm gonna uh, bounce planer that guy uh, next turn play a driver after that bounce planer his guy then bring back my creep my creeps creeper and you know pump my team Jesus yeah this guy's deck is actually pretty good I mean it's not really pretty good because he has a lot of questionable cards like this thing and the thing that makes you draw seven but still like he has a lot of good ones too like this thing and this thing alright let's go ahead and do it we will pump my team twice here and then kill his guy and then get to attack the question is do I uh, kill his his tracker I think maybe I do since I'm not really worried about this 5-5 five, five death touch guy at this point but I am worried about this thing he could just draw something and disown me so I think that's what I'll do let's sack this thing Bump the team and attack. He probably doesn't have anything, but you know, I should just play correctly just in case. Alright, got there. So we made some mistakes there that game, but let's go ahead and try to. Uh, not make them again. I think I wanna bring in a gold flash again because he has a lot of one toughness guys. And what do I wanna take out? But this time I actually kind of kind of want the creep creepers since uh, I wanna be able to block his early stuff. I could take one of the of the cancers, right? Since two of them don't really do anything mm, uh, really impressive. So yeah, let's try this. I think I think it is okay. Oh, I think I actually don't want a mulligan this hand since I do have removal and I have a late game bomb. I mean, not a bomb, but a four four flyer, right? I guess this could be a mulligan, but I think if I mean looking at his deck, I think I feel confident in keeping a hand with a lot of lands, a late game card, and a, a death win. He didn't play anything that aggressive here. If, if you play like a tracker, I can just death win it. Alright. That guy could get death win it too. Let's see what I draw here. Hmm. That's even better actually. <coughs> Alright. See what he musters here for. Ooh, right. Ringleader. Alright, so I guess I, I'm, I'm gonna take three, right? Unless I death win something, but I don't really want to death win anything here at this point. I mean, maybe I should, I'm not sure. Yeah, this thing is very annoying, so let's just go ahead and death win that. I think that that could be a bit risky, but death win is kind of money intensive too. It's not like I'm, I'm gonna be able to. to to kill his, his like if he plays a boar next turn, a 4-3 boar, I wouldn't be able to kill it with uh, Deathwing this turn either way. So I'd rather just not take damage here since when I get to the late game, I probably will have the better odds at winning here. Alright, Fervent Cathar. So he's gonna bash me for 3 now. I mean, for 6, but I will deal the, the, the righteous blow to this thing let's go ahead and do it yeah he actually had a pretty aggressive start here I think if I hadn't drawn that righteous blow I, I would be in dire straits at this point next I can play the, the demon he is having mana problems and then I can play the, the commander and, and gain a bit of life alright yeah, like, 
I could be in trouble here, I guess. I'm at 13. Why didn't this guy come last turn? Alright. Let's go ahead and drop the Renegade. Now, unless he has something, he, he will not be able to attack into my Renegade. If he attacks only with the Cathar, oh, alright. So he's probably going to uh, pair that with his Mad Prophet. No? Alright. So he's not going to attack with the Mad Prophet. Sure, I'm gonna take two. No worries here. I could play the uh, Gold Knight Redeemer now, but I don't think I'm gonna do that since I wanna actually play an Evernight Shade first to block his guy and then be able to next turn gain two extra life from my uh, Gold Knight guy. I mean, alright, he chose not to use him as a Mad Prophet. Uh, there's a chance he has the, the draw 7 thing there, but if he does, I'm actually not unhappy about that. If he forces me to draw 7, oh well. Alright, this guy has Undying, so let's go ahead and block it. Now I'm going to go up to 15 life, if everything goes according to plan. Man, I keep drawing those lands, huh? Right, let's play a swamp, and now I think I will refrain from playing future lands here. Oh, I should have left a, a swamp open, obviously, because of this guy, but either way, let's go ahead and bash with this thing, I guess. Yeah, I guess. It seems fine. If he takes it, he, we will be at 15 life at peace. And it's not like he has. Oh, alright. That's fine by me, actually. Getting a 2 for 1 here at this point. Feels like I'm getting a lot of 2 for 1s this draft. <coughs> and now I think my board position is significantly better than his. Uh, and I'm, I'm at 15 life, which is a lot. Not a lot less than, than the 20 he has, especially since next turn I'll be able to attack him down to... Oh, alright, another Mad Prophet. He doesn't seem too fond of actually using the Mad Prophet. But he actually did it this time. Ooh, that's the tracker. Yeah, that's... That could get problematic here. Alright, well... I think... I think I'm actually going to attack him with both here. I mean, he will deal how much damage to me? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But that, that is if he doesn't block anything here. And if he doesn't block anything, he's going to take 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 damage down to 9. And he will be in a very precarious position. So I think I'm okay with just trying to go ahead and, and race him here see what he does alright he didn't do anything so let's go ahead and pump my guy here for the full amount I mean yeah he could even like kill my my thing next turn if he really wanted to by throwing away one of his guys even if I leave one mana open here he could just attack first pump his guys and then just fight so I guess I have no reason not to just bash him for the full amount here let's hope he doesn't have more hasty guys that, that would kinda suck and the good news here is that he, he doesn't have a lot of mana which means that if he uh, attacks me, I mean, if he wants to, to kill my, my shade, he'll have to use up two of his mana, which will mean that he will not be able to play anything too scary. Yeah, this, this card's so good. Ooh, alright, grounded. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty bad card. Still going to attack with both my guys here since 
Alright, he did not kill my thing. Ooh, that's... That's kinda nice. But I think I will simply attack here. No reason to play my, my, my Kunos right here, especially since he could just... Kill it for free. If it goes down to like one life, then I guess I will be able to. <coughs> Alright, let's go ahead and pump it. And let's just go ahead and not play my blowout artist. He made alright, he did not try to to, to fight my my shade. Yeah, at this point I think he's pretty screwed. I I mean, there's always bonfire of the damned, but I'm not sure if he has it, but yeah, this is a fine card. Still waiting for the day where I will open one of these. <coughs> but I think he doesn't have a way out, out here. He will be able to draw an extra card thanks to his mad profit but even so hmm champion of lamb holds that's interesting good thing is uh, I think he's just dead because he cannot kill my blood artists anyway way I think I'm gonna have to do at least four damage to him here at this point Ooh, dark imposter why hello there Do I actually want to play a Dark Impost? Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I even have an extra uh, land in hand. I could, I guess, just play a Dark Imposter, remove his his tracker and bash him. Right? Yeah, that, that is going to be almost the game. However, it does open myself up to shenanigans here, to, to mass sweepers. I think... Maybe my best course of action here would be simply to play my blood artist and uh, attack him with both. He will have to. He will actually have to block both, otherwise he's dead. And then he will lose to life. Yeah, I think this way is safer. And this way, like, if he untaps and plays a big bomb, I can just untap, play this thing out of the blue and just remove it. Because now, by, by playing the, the blood artist, I will be able to just sweep his table clean here. He cannot let any of these guys th here through. And he will lose, lose two life either way. Alright. And now even a bonfire of the damned will kill him since my blood artist will see to that. This card has awesome mod by the way. And it is a pretty awesome card. Cheaper than the the Innistrad Vampire, the four mana one. I guess the vampire is is still better, but Alright, Nightshade Peddler. I think now is the time where I just untap, play Dark Imposter, remove his Mad Prophet, even get to, to draw an extra card here. <laughs> uh, he's at 3. No, I think I, I could just like play a Gold Knight Commander and then a Dark Imposter. 1, 2, 3, one, two, three 4. I'll have 2 or 3 mana, depending on, on how I do it. And then he'll just have no way to do anything here. Uh, yes, I think that's correct. Let's go ahead and do it. <coughs> yeah, no reason why not play that. This way I get to pump my shade. <laughs> not that I will really need to, but oh well. So he doesn't have anything here, but I cannot think of a card that he could have here. All right. So 
so it appears he is dead. Which means we are in the finals. Awesome. Alright, see you there.